Hi, uh, I'm Blake, and this video is going to be about classical conditioning. Uh, this is going to be part of the behavioral sciences component for the 2015 MCAT, and uh, hopefully you can learn a little something about it <laughs> from this video. A uh, quick little history about uh, classical conditioning. It was developed by a fellow of the name of Ivan Pavlov, and uh, he was a Russian researcher who you may recognize if I underline his name and talk about his four-legged friends. So Pavlov's dogs. Uh, if you're familiar with the experiment, I'm just going to kind of go over it here and hopefully clarify some points. Uh, if you're not, then hopefully you can learn something. And um, so let's, let's really get started. The ultimate goal of classical conditioning is to make something called, we like to call a conditioned stimulus all right, the CS for short, elicit a something that we uh, refer to as the conditioned response or the CR. And you may be uh, uh, wondering, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you. And the way that we do that is via conditioning. Go figure, right? conditioning. I mean, it's in the title. So, uh, if you don't quite understand that yet, hold your horses, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> Alright, so before we ever condition, right, we call that stage before conditioning. So before conditioning, uh, BC, uh, we start off we're going to start this experiment with food. Any good experiment starts with food. And that is supposed to be a bone. Uh, we're going to put food because my, my drawing skills are not that great. And uh, this food is going to be our unconditioned stimulus. Okay? Or the U.S. for short. And this unconditioned stimulus is going to cause something. And in this instance, it's going to make my four little uh, four-legged friend here. All right, it's a dog. It's gonna make my four-legged friend salivate. Okay, he's drooling. These are, these are drool drops. Okay, and this salivation is called the unconditioned additioned. There we go response. I can't spell right now. The unconditioned response. And the unconditioned stimulus causes this unconditioned response via reflex. Okay, it's reflexive. The dog can't help but salivate whenever it sees food because, well, dogs love food. You know, dogs don't know it's not bacon, right? <laughs> and uh, we also have this other thing in this experiment that we're going to call the neutral stimulus. And in this instance, that's a bell and it's ringing. So if you whenever I ring the bell, it really doesn't have a huge effect on my four-legged friend. And so this is my four-legged friend with his beady eyes. And uh the, the, you know, he's just kind of confused whenever I ring that bell thinking, "Well, what the heck's going on here?" Um, you know, that's not food. Give me the food. Where's the food? Uh, so, just remember that the neutral stimulus, uh, we don't care about the response that the neutral stimulus uh, elicits because we're going to change the response that the neutral stimulus causes uh, via conditioning. So, now, during conditioning, during conditioning, DC, DC Comics, right? Alright, so during conditioning, we pair the neutral stimulus, that bell, the ringing of the bell, you know, ring, ring, uh, with our unconditioned stimulus, the food, food, and what do you think is going to happen when we do that? Well, 
the dog right here. See, that's the dog, okay? The dog is going to salivate. And you're going to say, well, okay. Uh, and the dog salivates. This is our unconditioned response. And I'm sorry. And the dog salivates because it's being exposed to the food. Well, since we're pairing up that bell with it during the conditioning phase, all right, we're kind of building this association with the bell and salivation. Okay, that's that's our ultimate goal is to to build this association between the the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned response, and uh, we do this over and over and over again. Um, so in this instance, let's say we do it a thousand times. All right, we we ring that bell for that dog and give him food a thousand times, a lot of times. Okay, we do this over and over and over again to build this uh, relationship when we're conditioning him. Well. After we do all of that, you know, after conditioning, AC, uh, ACDC, um, after conditioning, whenever we ring the bell, all right, you may be thinking, well, you know, okay, whenever we ring the bell, that's the neutral stimulus. Well, after conditioning, the neutral stimulus becomes the condition stimulus. Right? Remember that from before? I told you to write it down? Okay, there we go. The condition stimulus. And so if you wrote that down before, you should know what's coming up. So what does the condition stimulus elicit or cause? Well, I'll give you a hint. It starts with the dog. Okay, so here's the dog. So whenever that bell rings, the dog's going to drool. Right? And we no longer call this our unconditioned stimulus, our unconditioned response. It's our conditioned response now. So, um, so now we've undergone conditioning, and this is great. So the bell, our conditioned stimulus, now elicits a conditioned response, and we did this via conditioning. So. Uh, I would encourage you to go home, try this with your pets. It's a great training exercise. If you get bored and you mastered that, try it on a younger sibling uh, or significant other. It's even more entertaining that way. Now, before I let you go, there's one thing I need to talk about with you, and that is extinction. Now, don't get too excited. Unfortunately, this doesn't have to do anything with dinosaurs. Uh, but uh, in this instance, extinction... Uh, refers to the fact that over time, uh, if the conditioned stimulus, right, the ringing of the bell after conditioning, uh, continues to be presented without the unconditioned stimulus, without the food, the conditioned response, salivation, in response to the bell ringing, will cease to be elicited. All right, it won't happen anymore. You need that continual reinforcement with this behavior, and this demonstrates that this behavior, while it can be changed and fairly easily, um, in most instances, uh, it's not a permanent change in behavior. It needs to be uh, constantly reinforced for it to continue occurring. So. Uh, anyway, I hope you learned something, and uh, before I let you go, if you really like that, I would encourage you to go read up on something called the Little Albert Experiment, and uh, it's really kind of interesting. Uh, this was done you know, in a time way before they protected uh, uh, patients' rights, so uh, just remember... Uh, you know, classical conditioning isn't permanent, so he probably recovered. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and have fun with the questions. Bye.